California. My goal and objective today is to help educate you to exercise your rights to ask for reasonable accommodation in the workplace. What I'm sharing with you today is not only applicable to what I do every day on my job at UCI, but as well as at every employer in the state of California. How many of you know the disability discrimination law is most commonly known as ADA? Raise your hand if you heard of ADA. So that's the federal law, the American with Disabilities Act. Here in California, we have Fair Employment Housing Act. How many have heard of FEHA? That's what we commonly call FEHA, so not very many. So the difference between these two laws, the American Disabilities Act is not as actually liberal as our state of California is. The ADA says if you substantially limited of a major life activity, whereas FEHA, Fair Employment Housing Act, says you just have to be limited from a major activity in order to be eligible for disability. So these laws actually protect folks that have disabilities and enable you to request a reasonable accommodation in the workplace or for students to request an accommodation while they're going to school. There's a couple processes for both. I'm not an expert in the educational side of the students. However, we do have a student disability services on campus and their process is just a little different, but the premise is that each is eligible to request a reasonable accommodation. You have the right to do so. So I'm encouraging and hope empowering you today to exercise those rights and don't be afraid. Because so oftentimes, employees are afraid those who are seeking employment or that are already employees in the workplace have a, have a fear of approaching their supervisor and don't know what to do, what are the first steps they do to request a reasonable accommodation. Sometimes there's a stigma that amongst employees think and perceive that if they ask that it'll change the perception of their ability to do their job. Can you guys ever relate to that? So the university, of course, I'm the compliance officer, so I make sure that every employee at UCI, we are in compliance with this request and that no one is discriminated against. So my position is housing and human resources. Other employers in the state of California, depending on who you work for, oftentimes have a disability management position within human resources. It could be like known as the benefit manager at an employer. Uh, and, and in the in the educational system, like K through 12 for the under eight for the younger children, you're going to like the school psychologist, and you're speaking with them to help get the, your child tested for accommodations and what their abilities are. If you want to advocate more for your child in the educational setting, K through 12, you have a 504 plan written, which are accommodations that follow that student up until 12th grade. I know this because my child has a, has a disability. So additional time on test. You know, if lighting is an issue in the classroom, you know, you can request specifics to, you know, lighting. You know, dim lighting or bright lighting just depends on what your limitations are. So you have a right to exercise this and don't be afraid, pursue it because it's gonna enable you to perform the essential functions of your job, and that be as a student in the classroom, be successful taking a test and finishing it, and putting forth your best effort. So I want to continue with another law that most people in California do not even know it exists. It's an interactive process. It seems, it is simple actually. It's AB 2222. This law was put into place in the state of California because employers excluded their employees from the process of being included of, a, of what to say and put their input. So in other words, if an employee came to them and asked for a reasonable accommodation and had suggestions of how, what would work best for them, then the employer would exercise total rights as trumpet and say no or say yes. Whereas the interactive process law says you need to include the employee. So I have a motto at UCI, which I use to all of my departments and supervisors, and I empower the employee to exercise this right, to have a voice. Because when you have a disability or impairment, you have a voice, and you can exercise that voice. You have rights. So I encourage them to include the employee. So the IP is to meet and confer, not to defeat and defer. I say this constantly. So I say, this is my mantra. So if, you're, if, you're, if your employer is not in compliance, then you need to speak up and you can exercise that empowerment. Because you are protected under ADI, but most because you're California, 
employees or students, you're protected under Fair Employment Housing Act. So the process in engaging the interactive process is started with a primary step. The documentation of the interactive process starts with, as an individual who is coming to their employer with asking for a reasonable accommodation, it's premised by a medical certification. So the previous speaker had mentioned a couple times emphasizing your relationship with your doctor. Very, very important. The physician drives this because they're gonna document what your limitations are. Please remember that you do not document diagnosis. They don't, it's none of their business, none of their employer's business. Even a prospective employer, if you're going on an interview, you don't have to disclose you have a disability and they're not able, by law, to ask you if you have a disability. If your impairment is obvious, they may say, <clears throat> explain to me that you can you know, perform the essential functions of your job. But oftentimes, disabilities are unseen, they're not apparent. Now, once you get hired, the job offer, you may ask for accommodation. I just actually had an example of this in health sciences. I had an employee who was offered the job, and she actually has a vision impairment. I don't know what her diagnosis is, and we don't want to know. Sometimes employees, employees will disclose that because they feel comfortable and safe doing so, but by law, the employer will not be asking you any personal information. So just know that is a HIPAA violation, and it is not okay if they're asking you any details about your diagnosis. Just your functional limitations, your work restrictions, what you can and cannot do. So when you're applying for a job, or you already have in, you're in your job, you have a job description. So it's very important that your doctor has an idea what you do on a daily basis. Are you in front of a computer all day? Are you working, um, you know, is there, is, so the take for instance of working in the front of the computer all day. Is the lighting of the monitor, is the size of the monitor large enough? Uh, do you have voice activated software? There is software that can be uh, loaded on your computer that talks the text back to you. So you don't have to see what's on the screen. You can hear what's being on the screen. There's lots of different adaptive equipment that's out there. That's not crazy expensive either. So this individual who was hired recently is scheduled to start next week. We've already been actively providing her adaptive equipment. And see, the whole premise was we asked her what she needed. I'm not an expert on vision impairment. I don't have that disability. So I'm going to ask you, what do you need? Sometimes employers don't even think the basic fundamental question is the individual who has a disability usually has it already figured out what you need, what will work for you. And it, it's usually not that expensive. If it is a little expensive, that's okay because an excuse to say it's not in our budget is not okay either. So this number one point of a documentation is the first, it's required by law. So the employer is going to ask you, and they have the right to ask you for the medical certification. So don't really just in providing the medical certification, because that's actually going to benefit you by providing what your limitations are. Okay, so don't be afraid. Just don't include diagnosis. Oftentimes, like for instance, you and my audience here may have not a temporary disability, you may have a permanent disability. So if you're a chronic medical condition where your eyesight may be impaired and it's not going to miraculously maybe be fixed the next day. Your accommodation may be more than six months. It may be more than a year. That's okay, too. So you want to specify, too, this is adaptive equipment. Obviously, it's not going to be given to you for, for 30 days. And then they're going to be like, okay, that clock is up. We're going to take that away from you now. So you want to specify the date, the doctor's note. So again, I mentioned already about the diagnosis. And employers are not allowed to call your doctor, by the way. Not allowed. Believe it or not, I've had that happen. <laughs> it's pretty bad. <laughs> the essential functions of your job, I mentioned you have a job description, but you will have a job description. If you're seeking employment, you don't have a job right now, you're not current employee, look at the job description before you apply for the job. I always emphasize if you can perform the essential functions of your job with or without a reasonable accommodation, you're qualified to apply for the job. But know what your job entails. Know what it requires of you. So oftentimes, you know, some positions don't obviously emphasize you're going to be sitting in front of the computer all day. But the nature of the job, like an administrative analyst, more than likely is going to be on the phone and in front of the computer a lot. So just know what the essential functions of your job are. 
because like I mentioned already, ergonomic assessments can be provided. Like at UCI, we actually have an ergonomic department. I myself have enough knowledge of adaptive equipment to be a little dangerous, but I always have our ergonomist come out and back up my recommendations because what I want to do on behalf of my employees is to enforce the accommodation. So if I'm meeting a little resistance from a supervisor, then I'm going to push back. And I'm going to always, my mantra of course is going to be ADA, FIHA, we are obligated by law to comply. But in my next, there's no actually, in my vocabulary, no is not an answer. I'm going to enforce the accommodation. I'm going to advocate on your behalf as the individual who's asking for the accommodation. I'm going to be your voice too. So if you don't feel safe going to your supervisor immediately, you can always bypass that person and go to your employer's HR benefit rep or disability management. Or, um, and I'm not sure we have work comp, you know, which is injuries on the job, which might be your applicable, but sometimes the departments are integrated like ours. So we have someone handled all of it. And some employers are small, like we're huge here at UCI, so we have a team of like nine people. So I'm the only one that actually enforces the accommodations and implements them. I mean, our whole team does, but I'm the one that actively is meeting with the individual, actively meeting with uh, the supervisor, and advocating and implementing the accommodation. So you know how important documentation is. These slides are heavy on the process because this is the process of what happens. They're a little boring, sorry. But the process is important because you need to know what steps you need to take to help empower yourself to ask for that accommodation at work. Now, I don't know what limitations each individual has their own limitations according to you know, their own diagnosis and how it is impacting or the stages of where, what you're going through. You know yourself what you need. Now, sometimes, like if you're heavy looking at a computer, your eyes might get fatigued. You might you need you may need time to walk away from your computer. Fluorescent lights. I don't know how you guys are with fluorescent lights, but I personally suffer from migraines, and I had mine removed over my head. I do not have fluorescent lights over my head. So, those are you know examples that you can ask for. There's alternate work shifts. You know, but I'm giving you examples of uh, like a modified work schedule. You can take additional breaks if you need to, like to get some rest from your eyes. Um, the main thing the employer though may come back with is they may they may not give you exactly what you want because not always exactly what you want is always going to be granted. More likely than not, if it's reasonable, it will be granted. You need to ask though, so don't be afraid. So if you don't ask, you don't receive. Be creative. I mean, I know all of you have an idea of already how you function outside of work, at school, at home, what you've already had to do in your own life to modify how you go about daily activities. You know yourself. So you are the best person and best advocate to present to your supervisor or the HR department to advocate for a reasonable accommodation at work. 